Hello, hello, Crafty Mantis here, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Rebirth of the Night. So, uh, this uh, tutorial is being recorded in a version 2.76.2, .2. so if you are playing a, a version either before that or after that, um, some of the stuff may be a little bit different, however, the, um, the general ideas will be the same, so I definitely want to put that out there. Um, today, we are going to be covering eight different sections. And I'm going to go ahead and put those up on the screen. There will also be timestamps down in the description so that in case there are, you know, topics that you're not really interested in, you can end up skipping through the video um, as you see fit. So the first topic that we're going to be covering is an intro to the mod pack. So this will end up being things like some of the mechanics and stuff that you need to know about the mod pack in order to help you survive. Two is going to be getting started, which is, you know, basically like the first 40 minutes of the game. Three is going to be settling down and adventuring out, which is, you know, once you find your area for your base and exploring outside um, to include the different dimensions within the game. Four is going to be the different game stages, so things that, you know, trigger the difficulty levels within, you know, within the actual mod pack. Five, we're going to be covering the different, you know, beginner's armor, weapons, and tools. Six, we're going to be getting into enchanting and reforging. Seven, healing items. And eight, the last topic will be the types of bases. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Number one, intro to the mod pack. Now, the first thing that you're going to need to know about this mod pack is that the days are 20 minutes long. So you have 20 minute days and 20 minute nights. So it's twice as long as your normal vanilla Minecraft. Now, if you look up in the top left of my screen, you see a little bar there with a sun. That's letting me know that it's a day. However, you know, that doesn't stay if you're underground. If you notice, it disappears. And so if you are caving and stuff, you're not going to know what time of day it is. And so one of the first things that you're going to want to, you know, actually craft is going to be a clock. So if we grab this clock, I can stand under here. And that bar is not going to disappear. And it doesn't matter where in your inventory this is. It could be, you know, in, you know, the regular inventory or it could be on your hot bar. So it's not, you know, it's not going to really matter. Now, if you want a more exact time of day, you can craft a pocket watch, which is just, you know, the clock with a piece of quartz. Now, in this mod pack, you can get, you know, quartz normally in the nether. Or you can end up getting it from the ore bags, which are dropped from, you know, the mobs. And so with this, you end up, as you can see in the top left, you have the exact time of day that, you know, that it is. So that definitely helps out a lot, especially if you're going to be doing some caving, which is going to be extremely needed, you know, in order to get the resources that you need in order to survive. Now, the other thing that you're going to need to be aware of is that we have seasons. So we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And you can create a clock in order to see what season it is. Because if you notice right now, this one right here, we have the blue background with the yellow. So that means we're actually in summer right now. And so with this right here, it's just done with the redstone quartz. And then these are actually tin ingots. I know they kind of look, they kind of look like iron ingots, but they are actually tin ingots. But yeah, so that'll allow you to know what season it is. And you need to know that because as you can see from here, there are only certain times when seeds are fertile. So like with this wheat, it's only going to grow in the summer or the autumn. And so during any other time, you're not actually going to be able to grow your seeds. So let's go ahead and show you guys an example here. So this right here, this is beetroot and it only grows during the autumn and I'm clicking, but it's not growing. So that's one of the things that you're going to need to you know, be aware of. However, you can get around this by creating the greenhouse glass. And this is made using the cyan dye, which, you know, a really easy place to get it is any of like the swamp biomes. Because there's a swamp flower that gives you the cyan dye. And so it doesn't matter what season it is, you can end up growing. And so let's go ahead and grab these beet roots so I can show you. But see, I can make this one grow just fine. Because it has this over here. And these just have to be within seven blocks above the um, the actual... Oh, um, okay, apparently <laughs> you're eating um, you're eating my stuff there. Um, <laughs> but just within seven blocks of it and it'll, you know, grow regardless of what actual season it is. 
Now, the other thing that you need to be aware of is that every seven days, um, oh, and with seasons, seasons are nine days long. And then every seven days, you end up with an invasion. And there's different kinds, you know, different kinds of ev invasions within the game. And, you know, so you're not going to know what type it is. You could have angry, you know, angry animals. Or you could end up having, like, a pillager army coming at you. So you're definitely going to, you know, want to be aware of what the day is. And that's displayed up in the top right. So right now, I know on day seven... We are going to be getting a invasion at, you know, at night. There are also blood moons within this mod pack. And so those, you know, those are relatively rare. But they do cause problems because things can spawn where they normally can't spawn. And you can't sleep during blood moons, invasions, or thunderstorms. And speaking of sleep, when you do end up going into, you know, to actually sleep, you're going to want to make sure that your bed is someplace well lit. Because, like, if I was to actually sleep right now, I wouldn't be able to sleep through the whole night because I would end up having, like, a zombie or something like that spawn and actually attack me. So you definitely want to make sure that you are, you know, protected as well as well lit or else you're not going to be able to sleep through the entire night. And when you do sleep, you're going to end up getting extremely hungry. So definitely make sure that you are nice and full before you sleep because you will die quite rapidly. Um, after you wake up, if your hunger bar completely depletes. Now, speaking of dying, one of the great things about this mod pack is that if you end up dying, anything that's on your hot bar or on your body, you actually get to keep. Um, they will stay with you. So uh, when you're exploring and stuff, definitely make sure that your important stuff is either on your body or on your hot bar. Because then when you die, you still end up, you know, you're still able to actually get it back. Now, one, um, and then on top of that, any of the tools and stuff that you have, especially on your hotbar, they will lose dur durability upon death, but that's one of the costs that are there in order to, um, you know, kind of take back some stuff in order, you know, to allow you to actually keep your, you know, keep your gear. Now, one of the other things within this mod pack is that water is not infinite. Um, like right here, as you can see, this, this was all ice. It all melted and it, yeah. But if I end up taking, let's take this one right here. As you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't stay. And so for the ponds and stuff like that within the, you know, within the world, they are not an infinite water source. And in order to get infinite water, you are going to want to come over to like a river, an ocean, or, you know, something along those lines in order to actually get, you know, an infinite water source. So that's some of the, you know, some of the mechanics within the mod pack that, you know, you need to be aware of in order to help you survive within the world. So let's go ahead and get moving on to getting started. Number two, getting started. Now, when you first spawn into the world, you are definitely going to want to look for food. Um, and one, you know, some of the best sources for beginning food are these berry bushes right here. For one, you can actually break these and take them with you. And so you can plant it around either your temporary base or your permanent base. And it's a great source of food. And we'll get into what you can turn it into here in just a minute. Oh, and apparently you're eating my gardens. Um, but yeah, so that's one thing that you're going to have to worry about too is that, you know, these animals do end up eating your stuff. And so you'll want to be careful about that. Make sure that they can't actually get to your crops. There's um these Pam's gardens. So there, there were four. There was a tropical one right here, but... But all you do is break these and it turns into, you know, multiple pieces of, you know, food, vegetables, fruits, all of that. And so your inventory does fill up rather quickly with that. Um, so, you know, that's one thing that you can fall back on. But I still suggest these berry bushes right here. There are also, also these berry bushes here. Now, they're not quite as useful because you can't actually turn these into the, oh, into the fruit salad, which we're going to be getting into here in a little bit. All you can use it for is to make the fertilizer. And so that's one of the reasons why I suggest the other berry bushes. For one, you can take them with you. And, you know, but these are good if you need something quick and, you know, on, you know, on the go. Now, another great source of food right here is the actual stock. So let's go ahead and grab this right here. And the great thing is, is that if you're killing a whole bunch of monsters, all you need is a pot and a bone. And you can actually go ahead and make it and so this only takes you know it takes four bricks four copper and a stick 
you know, so it, you can either get it, especially like if you're around, you know, like a, a river biome or something really quick and easy to make something like this. But with that, you can use, you can use a stock. You can also use any kind of vegetable. If you use the vegetables and stuff, you get two. If you use meat, you end up getting three. So it is definitely, you know, it is definitely something that is worth, you know, actually creating, especially if you're running into the problem of not being able to find any other food stores. Now, the other type of food is actually the Pam's trees, which are, you know, converted into dynamic trees. And you can end up making more of them by having a bucket of dirt. And so it's basically a bucket and a piece of dirt. And then whatever the, the fruit or nut or, veg, or not, well, it wouldn't be a vegetable, fruit, nut, that kind of thing with that. And you end up with a seed and then you just plant it like normal. And it'll end up growing and then start creating, you know, just start actually making the, you know, making the, the fruit. Now, speaking of the uh, fruit salad, this ends up, so this right here, this is the cutting board. And it is made with a brick, a stick, and a plank. And if you have two pieces of fruit, you can end up turning it into, into a fruit salad. There's also, you know, um, some other salads and stuff that are really easy to make. But because the fruit, you know, because of those berry bushes are so abundant, I would definitely suggest carrying one of these around, especially at the beginning of the game when you don't have too much food, because then you can end up making the fruit salad, which gives you right here. So this gives you one and a half of the hunger haunches. So it's a really good food to actually, you know, to actually use at the beginning of the game. Now, one of the things that you are going to need to be aware of is that food stacks differently. So if you are looking at, you know, like a half a haunch to a haunch, you're going to be able to actually stack stuff up to 32. You cannot stack food up to 64. It only stacks up to 32. Now, if you're getting into like one and a half to two haunches, like with the fruit salad, you're only going to be able to stack 16. And then, you know, you're, we're getting higher here. So three to four, you're only able to stack eight of them. And then, you know, larger, you're only able to stack four. And then like the super meals, the actual feasts, you can stack two. And you also need to be aware that the better the food saturation and stuff like that, the slower it is to actually eat. So definitely, you know, make sure to be aware of that. I actually find it easier to have like the one and a half than, you know, than the actual anything larger than that. Because for one, a lot of times you end up, you know, you don't want the saturation to be too high so you can actually eat quicker. Now with the trees, you know, you can end up harvesting, you know, the stuff off of it. But if you're wanting wood and stuff, you're going to want to be aware that the tree falls. And so if you're actually on the wrong side of it, you will take damage. Um, and it will also kill, you know, potentially any of the animals that end up getting in the way. So you will definitely want to be aware of that as you are, you know, actually collecting up, you know, collecting up materials. And that's one of the things that you're definitely going to want to do within the first 20, you know, 20 minutes of, you know, actually entering the game. You're going to want to gather a whole bunch of wooden stuff so that you can actually start thinking about going and exploring. Because in order to get the metals and stuff, you are going to need to do some spelunking. So if you do not find any surface coal like this, you can still end up making a, um, a flint and tinder. So it's this thing right here. And it's made with any kind of cobblestone and a piece of flint. And so you, you use this in order to, you know, to light fires and stuff. And, you know, and so that is a, you know, a replacement for, you know, like the fire starter and stuff. So it's something that you can end up using just in case you don't, you know, you're not able to find, you know, find any of the coal so you can make torches. Now with this one right here, you can end up making candles. So the tallow comes from pigs. And so if you have a bunch of string and tallow, you can end up making candles instead of torches. So those are definitely very helpful, you know, especially if you're not able to find any coal right up front. So you can get some light sources going um, without, you know, without actually having to have that. Now, in order to store your stuff, especially beginning of the game, you definitely want to look at these crates right here. They only hold nine items. However, they act like a shulker box. So you can end up filling this up with nine items, break it, and everything stays in it. So it's made using four iron and four planks it could be any you know any plank because it the, this will actually change texture so this one right here this is a oak crate and so that's because it's made with the four oak and the uh, the four iron 
Now, later in the game, once you get your better with mods set up, then you can actually end up creating a backpack. And that's use the tan leather, the leather strips, and the the chest there. And so this ends up going into your um, chest plate area. And you'll end up with basically an extra inventory slot. Now, in order to actually find metals and stuff, you're going to want to come down into the caves. Now, yeah, there's crates down here that you definitely want to check out because they do have some cool stuff. But as you can see, there's lots of metal and there's also going to be chests as well. But there's lots of different ores and stuff that are around the, the walls of the caves. Now, if you try to go strip mining, you're not really going to find anything unless you are actually close to a cave. Because the how the ore spawns are, you're going to want to actually, you know, go through and, you know within the caves because they're not they're not really going to spawn anywhere else and you're also going to want to be aware that it gets very dark very very dark so um one of the things that you can end up doing for this is you can actually carry the torch in your hand so you can actually see a little bit better granted it's definitely not suggested that you just go wandering around in the dark because yeah um some of the mobs down here are not all that friendly so that kind of gives you an overview as to, you know, what you need in order to get started and start gathering some of your, you know, some of your beginning stuff. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Number three, settling down and adventuring out. Once you have found your location for your, your actual base, you're going to want to remember that zombies can you know, harvest blocks. So if they have a pickaxe, they can harvest anything that you can with a pickaxe. Um, and then also dirt, they can harvest that via their hands. And so you are definitely going to want to be aware of that as you actually build your base up. And I'll get into a little bit more of the different types of bases you can build as, you know, as the last, last thing that we cover in this video. But once you finally find your area to settle down, you're going to want to set up your better with mod stuff. And so with this, you have, you know, like the millstone, you have your a cauldron, your turntable, saw, crucible. You're also going to have like the hibachis and stuff. And then you've got the regular windmill that you can end up using in order to get, you know, to get power. And then there is also a vertical windmill. So if you're like underground and stuff, that would be your best bet is to use the vertical rather than the regular windmill. And then we've also got the stone kiln as well. So this is something that you can end up making charcoal with. And that is definitely extremely helpful. And one of the things that you are going to want to do is you are going to want to rely on your JEI when you're trying to get through some of the stuff because some of the recipes have changed. For example, what used to be the um, the soul forged soul forged steel anvil, um, it has it is actually made with regular steel ingots from Dungeon Tactics instead of the soul soul forged steel. And so these are made in the crucible with coal dust and iron ingots. Um, another thing that you are going to want to be aware of as well is the multi-purpose stone anvil. This right here and a hammer will end up giving you all kinds of different resources and stuff. So we can go ahead and go over here and go uses. So you can end up coming in here and you can end up making all different kinds of bricks and stuff. And so the JEI is definitely going to be your friend when it comes to figuring out recipes for things and getting things set up. But this, you know, this right here will allow you to progress forward. And they've actually got a, a tab here for better with mods. So as you can see, these, these have already lit up because I put those down already. But yeah, so they've got all different kinds of things in here for better with mods. So it kind of gives you an idea of, you know, where you need to be progressing um, and stuff within that. And then we'll get into a little bit more of, you know, the achievements and game stages and stuff in the next step. But one of the things that, you know, once you actually get your base set up and stuff, you're going to want to go and adventure out. Now, in this most recent version of the mod pack, they have moved villages to greater than 2,000 blocks away from spawn. And so it's not going to be that easy to actually, you know, find them around, you know, from where you actually spawn. But they are still good to go out and find in order to rate it of the, the goodies that it has in there. From about 2,000 blocks to 2,999, you're going to end up finding more abandoned villages than, you know, and so the number of villages are, are going to be relatively small in there. However, if you go outside of 3,000 blocks, those are the ones that are going to be better fortified. They're going to have better stuff that you can end up raiding 
and as well as you know more villagers and stuff that you could end up trading with and then once you know once you decide that you actually want to get outside of this current dimension you have five other dimensions that you can end up going to so you've got the nether which is you know your standard obsidian portal and then you've got the aether which is the you know the glowstone and then activated with water you've got the end which of course you have to go and search for an end portal <laughs> which is always fun and then you've got the beneath which you end up just mining just go all the way down and you'll end up finding these really cool portal blocks down there you mine that and then you can end up jumping into what looks like the void but you get teleported to the beneath and then finally you have the twilight forest now for those of you who are already familiar with the twilight forest activating it is different it no longer requires a diamond so you're gonna have to go and fight the gas queen which you can find in the nether so it is definitely you know you know a little bit different and if we go back here to the achievements we can go beyond these lands so as you can see this kind of shows you the progression through the the other you know the other dimensions so you've got the beneath and the nether those are kind of the first two that you're probably going to end up going to and then you've got the aether which of course you end up needing the nether for in order to get the glowstone for that and then you have the end and then of course the twilight forest and that is considered to be the final dimension to you know to actually go to and so that kind of you know gives you some you know some ideas as to what you can end up going you know and adventuring out and gathering all kinds of resources but your actions have consequences so let's go ahead and move into the next number number four game stages now one of the things that you're definitely going to want to check out is the rebirth of the night mod pack wiki now i'm going to put links down in the description with the the home page for the wiki as well as some of the ones i'm going to be showing you today but right now we are looking at the progression stages right now there are a total of nine stages within the game and it all begins with the early game armor so this is once you get a full set of the armor and it goes through what happens when you actually get into you know once you pass that that stage so like this one you've got you know things that happen in all the dimensions the overworld and the beneath and then just the overworld you also have one for the mid game armor so this is you know you're talking about like your diamond your ruby we'll get a little bit more into armor and stuff once you know in the next in the next step and then you've got entering the beneath you've got first mithril there is entering the nether entering the aether um defeating the wither you've got defeating the ender dragon as well as defeating the gas queen which um is currently disabled until 2.78 now with this this gives you a lot of resources because it allows you to kind of plan what you do and so it's one of those like this one right here your first mithril if you don't think that you're going to be able to take on like the plague beasts and you know that kind of thing you might not want to mine the mithril and so you could still enter the beneath and kind of mark you know where the the different mithril ores are but until you're actually ready to move forward and be able to handle these things you might want to hold off on actually doing it so this wiki right here is definitely a huge benefit in kind of planning out how you progress through you know through the game and then you know with the armor pieces those you know those right there it's 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 any of them so it's a full set of pre-diamond so if you get a full set of bronze or iron or silver or any of those then those are what trigger that so you could get away like if you're carrying around a backpack you could get away with just having a helmet the boot the boots and the pants and not trigger this you know this stage but you also have to be aware that the mobs end up dropping armor pieces and so it could end up moving you forward into this and so we'll actually get into a little bit more of the armor and weapons and tools in the next step number five armor weapons and tools rebirth of the night offers a lot of different armors and tools and weapons that you can end up using and the great thing about these is that they you know like especially with the armor they have their own set bonuses and so like if we grab this set right here so let's go ahead and i went ahead and went into survival for this if i put this in my hand we now have the bonus here so the hunter gives you an 80 percent attack speed so that's you know that's definitely you know really awesome 
you know, especially at the beginning of the game when, you know, you're, you, you could use all, you know, kinds of the boosts that you could possibly get. Now, one of the things with these is that some of them do require more than just the armor. So like the, the regular leather one, you had to have a bronze axe. Now, as you can see, the Mighty Hunter, it says that you require five. Now, if you go into achievements, let's go over here, right here. It says, you know, the Mighty Hunter, four out of five. Now, if you press the shift button, it shows you what you are missing from that set. And, you know, and so you can end up, you know, going through there. But you have to have one piece of it first before you can actually get it to show up. Because if we come back in here, let's say this one right here. If I press shift, it's not going to show me anything. And so that is one of the things that you're going to want to be aware of. Now, if you want to go and check out the, you know, the different set bonuses for each one of the armors, you'll want to go to the wiki page. And then I do have that link down in the description. So you'll be able to see what the set bonuses are for each one of the different armors. Now, with the tools, now I have these up here in a specific order. Now, with this one right here, this is the mining level. So this is a typical, typical progression. So we've got stone here, stone, iron, diamond, iron, obsidian, and oh, that got mixed up. There we go. It should be, yeah, because this is mining level. Yeah, iron. So it got, it got a little mixed up. So iron, diamond, obsidian, and obsidian. So this is the what you would normally see in, as to what you can actually mine. Now, the thing is, is that the mining speeds are different. And so like right here, the iron picks, it might be able to mine diamond, but it's not as fast as a gold or the silver. Um, in, my, in my survival let's play, I actually like to carry the silver and the iron both on me um, during the beginning of the game because silver mines a lot faster and so I can get through most of the blocks. And then if I run across anything that requires the diamond level, then I can end up using the, the iron pick. So that's one of the things that you're going to want to be aware of for your tools is that they may be able to mine higher levels, but they may not be as fast as some of the other tools. Now you have your normal progression of sorts. So th these are kind of like your vanilla sorts. So they use those kind of recipes like the... The gladius here, it's your typical, you know, two pieces of, you know, whatever, and then your handle. And then, you know, like your sharp stick, this is your, this is your wood sword. You get sharp sticks. Um, but these are not the only weapons within the game. You actually have a huge choice from Spartan weaponry as to what you actually can use. And the great thing about these is that they have specific abilities. Like this one right here, the long sword. Um, it's two-handed, but it does more damage than a normal sword. Now, like the, let's see if we can find it, saber. Here we go. Chest damage bonus. So if they are not wearing any chest armor, it does 100% base damage. And so that's one of the things that you're going to want to check out is the different weapons within here because depending on how you play the game, will kind of determine what weapon is, you know, best for you. Now, one of the later game kind of tools is going to be the grappling hook and so this is going to allow you to climb up cliffs but it ends up taking a rope coil it takes a lead and this is a gravitite if i can oh if i can grab it oh wait i'm in survival still there we go so the gravitite pickaxe so this gravitite is from the aether so this is definitely going to be something that you're not going to be able to get right up front but once you do actually get it this is going to be a huge help especially in exploring and being able to actually get over, you know, some of the huge mountains that are actually in here. So now, once you get your gear, you're probably going to want to enchant it. So let's go ahead and move forward. Number six, enchanting and reforging. Now, when you start making your weapons and your armor and stuff like that, one of the things that you're going to notice is that it has uh, quality. Now, if you end up with one of the ones that end up not, you know, not being so great then you can end up using the reforging station. Granted, this is somewhat later game because you are going to end up needing some wither ash and then you're going to end up needing the steel ingots. So granted, luckily it's not the steel forged or the soul forged steel ingots. They are just a regular steel. So it's some kind of stone slab, one of the anvils, a hammer, wither ash, two steel ingots, and the obsidian. And that brings you this right here, which is the reforging station. 
Now with this, what you do is you place your weapon, you know, into the reforging station. And then you place a material that it's made out of, and you can actually change it. Like that one, oh my gosh, the, yeah, we, we definitely wouldn't want to keep that. But it just ends up using one of the ingots or gems or whatever it's made out of, and uses that in order to reforge it. Um, and so that is one of the things that you definitely want to kind of check out, especially if you end up having a weapon that you're really great with and but if for you know when you made it it didn't quite have the the quality that you were expecting now um for the enchanting the enchanting table the recipe didn't change so it's your your typical four obsidian two diamonds and a book however how you enchant is different so you're still going to need your 15 you know your 15 bookcases and then you're still going to need your lapis so you can go ahead and put this in here go ahead and put your lapis in now, the 15, the 15 bookcase will give you the max number of enchants. And now with this one, you press this and it uses up one level and you keep, you keep going. Now it's going to take two levels. So it does add up. So let's go ahead and get all the way to the max. There we go. So we're all the way at the max. And so let's see, what do we have a lot of? Like here, we have ruined. So let's go ahead and grab that. So you left click it, you place it in. Okay, so it's now here and it, it will allow us to actually enchant it. But the thing is, is that you can add more. Now here it says zero of one, which means if I add another rune, I can get rune two. In order to get the next upgrade though, I need two. So let's go ahead and see. It doesn't look like I have two in here, but that is all right. So here we have efficiency. So we could go ahead and put that in. And then you could just keep doing this with any of the ones that end up popping up. And you've already spent the levels so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. And here we go. We can get efficiency for all the way up there. But this is all the space that you have to work with. And so you definitely want to try to find ones that will, you know, that are relatively small. And you can also rotate it. So as you can see, I've got it in my inventory or not my inventory, but on my mouse pointer. And if I right click it, it'll rotate it. And then I can end up deselecting it so I no longer have it. So that's kind of how you end up doing your enchantments and then once you're done all you do is grab the you know grab the axe now let's say you're not quite ready okay you're not quite ready to do anything with it so let's go ahead we're gonna put berserking on this it's like you know i'm not i want to i want to think about it let's go ahead and grab the axe see how it says has pending enchantments it's because it's already tagged this one with that enchantment so if i put this back in as you can see, Berserking is still there, but I can modify it. I can, you know, I can take it off, you know, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do anything with it. So you can hold off, like if you want to add, you know, some more of, you know, so get some more experience and come back to it, you can. So that's definitely one of the helpful things. And then you can also see if there's something in the enchantment table, it'll be floating above it. So now there is an upgrade to the enchanting table and it'll end up creating this one right here. And this is once you end up getting, you know, through the beneath and get your first mithril. So what you're going to do is you're going to be creating this enchantment table upgrade. And it's done with four gold blocks. you got the obsidian, mithril, an eye of ender, and a book of quill. And all you do is you take this and you right click onto your enchanting table and it ends up converting it. Now with this, in order to get the max discount, so a 30% discount over here, you're going to want to have 30 bookcases. And so if you only have 15 bookcases, you only get a 15% discount. But this really helps because you get to choose whatever enchantment you want on these. And it'll show you what the cost is. And each, you know, the different, the different enchantments all have, you know, different costs. And so some will, you know, like looting, looting 991. We got all the way up here to sharpness. And, you know, without too much of a problem, whereas looting, it costs, you know, it costs a lot more in order to do that. But the great thing about this is, is that you can specifically choose which enchantment you want to use. And you can also, let's go ahead and put sharpness on here. Okay. So now we have an enchanted sword. Normally in enchanting, you can't re-enchant it. But with this one, you can. So now I can choose, okay, well, I want to add looting to it. So you can progressively go through and add enchantments as you go through the game. So it is definitely well worth actually getting the enchantment table upgrade. And plus, you don't end up needing any kind of a lapis or anything like that. So you can end up using the lapis later in the game for other things like 
powering your wards and, you know, for your, for your base defense. And so that's, you know, that's kind of how we, you know, progress through the enchanting. There are other enchanting and disenchanting tables, but for, you know, mid, you know, for beginning to mid game, this is kind of the setup that you are going to end up, you know, kind of working with. So that's the reason why I am only covering these particular ones. Now, since, you know, since you're starting to get, you know, more into the game and you're getting things like Mithril, you're probably going to find the need for, you know, being able to heal yourself up outside of food items. So let's go ahead and move on to the next number. Number seven, healing items. Outside of the healing potions and healing elixirs available on this, in this mod pack, you also have the ability to make bandages and med kits. Now, with the bandages here, they end up doing, they restore 30% of your health over 60 seconds. And in order to apply, you basically hold it, you know, hold it in your hand and use your use button, usually the right mouse click, for five seconds, and then it'll apply it. And it does slow you down, so you will need to be aware of that. You definitely don't want to be using that as, you know, mobs are chasing you. Now, in order to make this, there are lots of different recipes. So you're going to need the durable fibers, which is the, the hemp rope from, you know, well, the hemp from the Better With Moss. So they've renamed this. And you can either make this using, you know, using the millstone. So with one, you get three. And then you can also do it in your inventory. So you can get the hemp and turn it into the durable fibers before you actually get your Better With Mods set up. You can also end up using flax as well as cotton in order to make these. Now, in order to make the actual bandages, you have this you can find in like swamps. You've also got your eucalyptus capsule. There's aloe vera, the glow shroom. You've got the cave root soap. You've got the cicada, which end game right there as well as the heart dust. Now, your aloe vera, you can end up finding, this is probably going to be one of the easier ones to find. Those are in places like the outback and the desert. And you can actually harvest this from there and then bring it back to your base and create a farm for them. And then with the cave root, you'll end up finding these vines within caves. And all you have to do is, you know, punch them and it'll harvest them. Granted, you want to make sure to grab these ones right here that don't have any color. The colored ones, they are edible. However, they will change your color. Um, like if you eat the blue one, you'll be running around looking like a blueberry. If you eat a white one, you'll end up running around looking like a ghost. So you'll definitely want to be aware of that. It's really funny on multiplayer. But um, the one that you're going to be looking for for the advantages is the one that has no color whatsoever. Now, the step up from this is going to be the med kit. So with this, it restores 70% of your health in 35 seconds. So it's definitely a lot faster and heals a lot more. And it's applied in the same way. However, it is a lot more expensive. So you need an iron ingot, two bandages, three of the hemp fiber or the durable fibers. And then, you know, like a glistering melon is one of the options. But there are definitely plenty of others. So you got your instant health, your, you know, your elixir of the same thing, heart dust, another bandage, as well as the healing stone from the aether. Now, you know, and then, you know, you can end up, that. there we go. You can end up creating you know, creating this. And so definitely very helpful. However, you do have to be aware that you're only allowed to stack four of the, you know, four of each of these. And so you can't carry a whole bunch of them around with you. Um, so you will have to be aware of that. So it's definitely a lot better to be carrying around the medkins since they do 70%. Now, in order to increase your health, what you're going to want to do, especially once you get down into the beneath, because this is where you're going to end up finding these. These are the heart crystal shards. And so they currently are only found within the beneath. But once you get nine of these, you end up creating a heart container. And with this, if you have five levels, you just right click and it'll apply it and it'll give you an extra health heart permanently. So normally you end up gaining additional, you know, additional health and stuff like that as you progress in levels. So like if you have 15 levels, you're going to have, you know, fewer hearts than say if you had 30 levels. But then if you have 30 levels... And you end up losing levels, you lose some of that health as well. And so this right here, the heart containers are definitely, you know, a way to kind of get around that and just increase your, you know, increase your health permanently using those. But like I said, it does require five levels in order to actually do that. So this gets you all wonderful equipped and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you can do in terms of actual bases. Number eight, types of bases. 
Now, there are many different types of bases that you can end up creating within, you know, the, the mod pack. This first one that I'm showing is actually my base, um, and it is considered to be a, you know, a, a ground base. Now, if you decide to build on, you know, on the actual above ground, you're going to want to make sure that the walls and defenses are at least 10 blocks away from the main part of your base. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to allow the mobs to not be able to detect you um, as much, except during invasions, which they, during invasions, they know exactly where you are, no matter how many, no matter how many blocks away they are from you. Um, but in general, 10 blocks away from your active part of your base will allow the mobs to kind of stay away from you. Um, and as you can see in this picture, I've got layers of defenses in order to try to keep out all different kinds of mobs. So like the water is there for the fire mobs and the lava is there for pretty much everybody else. If you decide that you don't want to actually, you know, build above ground, you could decide to build underground. Now, this base right here that I'm showing you, this one is done uh, by Joe Mama, and he's one of the people on the uh, Discord for, you know, for the mod pack. And as you can see, everything is built underground. So he's definitely got a lot of defenses and stuff, you know, to kind of try to keep out um, some of the mobs. So definitely lots and lots of lava because mobs will both dig up, they'll dig down, they'll dig through the sides, dig everywhere. So you definitely want to make sure that you're well protected, you know, especially if you're underground because... If you have any caves and stuff that are unlit around, you know, around your base, they're going to dig through in order to try to, you know, to actually get to you. So you definitely want to make sure that you have everything lit up in order to kind of mitigate that kind of risk that you have there. Now, this third base that I'm showing you, this is a water base. So water bases, you can either have them, you know, in the center of the water, in the water, uh, but you are going to have to, you know, be a little bit careful with that. Now, this one right here, this is uh, from Rice and also from, you know, also from the, the Discord server. Now, with a water type base, you're going to want to make sure that they are far enough away from the shore to kind of prevent bridges being made by the freezing when winter comes. And you are also going to need to be aware that there are sea serpents and water type mobs that, you know, will attack you out, you know, out in the middle of the ocean. But it can definitely, you know, create a nice, I mean, you've got a built-in moat already you know right there so any kind of land-based mobs are going to find it a little bit more difficult to actually try to get to you now this uh, last type of base that i am showing you this one was created by manly astronaut from you know from the discord server and that's a sky base mob or a, a sky base base <laughs> there you go we'll, we'll, we'll just call it a sky base base there we go um and with this one this one is a stationary one so you basically you know you pillar up you build your base, um, and you know it stays put. Um, however, you do have the option both in the sky bases as well as the water bases to use the Da Vinci vessels in order to create a mobile base. With the sky base, you are definitely going to want to make sure that you are at least 15 blocks above the ground. That way, you know you can kind of prevent the mobs that are spawning below you from detecting you. Um, so if you build it up high enough, you'll be able to, you know, kind of get away from, you know, away from the mobs pillaring up. However, dur during an invasion, they will still pillar up. So, you know, after an invasion, you'll want to make sure to get down and kind of clear out, you know, all of the, the pillars so that, you know, you don't have, you know, you don't have those on there. So those are kind of, you know, the, the four main types of bases that you can end up creating within this mod pack. So I definitely hope that you at least found one of them inspirational in your your trek through the through the mod pack, and I hope some of them give you some you know tips and tricks to to kind of help defend yourself. So I definitely hope you guys have enjoyed this beginner's guide to the rebirth of the night. If you did, definitely hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, click the mantis icon to subscribe, then hit the bell button to get notified when I put out additional content. Want to check out more of my videos? Try the one on the left, or you could check out the playlist on the right. That's it for now, but I'll see you guys in the next episode.